What helps protect the world's coolest smartphones from the scratches, drops, and bumps of everyday use? Visually stunning, damage-resistant Corning Gorilla Glass. Tough, yet smart. In the brand new Make Volume 26 is the Truth Meter Project, a circuit you can build yourself that measures the galvanic skin response. When you get nervous, excited, or startled, your skin releases a small amount of sweat that can be measured by looking for increased conductance in your skin. It's one of the many psychophysical responses that are monitored when you're taking a polygraph test. Now, this alone isn't a lie detector, but it's fun to play around with. Let's start with making the finger sensors. Use a three and a half inch piece of the loop side of Velcro and place a small square of the hook side of Velcro to the back of it. The loop side is the soft one and the hook side is the rough one. Then lay down a piece of stripped wire with the wire portion off the edge of the Velcro. On top of that, lay a strip of copper or brass foil. You can find that in a craft or art supply store. Here's a diagram of how it should look. Solder the wire down to the copper or brass foil. I found that it was easiest to use my soldering iron to paint the solder down. So that the sensor is comfortable to wear, be sure the solder is nice and smooth. Then you can try it on. Repeat this process for the second sensor. Solder the wires from each of the sensors to a pair of header pins. Now let's move over to the breadboard. The circuit for the truth meter is pretty simple. Let's step through what's happening as we breadboard it out. First I connected the power rails on my breadboard. Then I placed a pair of header pins where the sensor will be connected just as a placeholder. I connected one sensor cuff to positive and the other to ground through a 1 mega ohm resistor. This acts as a voltage divider, converting the resistance from the sensor cuffs into a voltage. Those are connected through a capacitor and resistor acting as a high pass filter, which cuts out longer frequencies. This will let our circuit create a usable baseline while still letting through the signals from our sensors. This connects to our dual op amp chip, which amplifies the signal. Remember that when you place the IC with the notch at the top, the pins are numbered this way. The op amp chip needs power as well, so connect pin 4 to ground and 8 to positive. This is not shown on the schematic, but can be found on the op amps data sheet. Next is the low pass filter. This will filter out high frequency noise, such as noise that originates from our 60 Hz power outlets. This is a resistor and a capacitor going in. I bend my resistors this way sometimes to make sure I have enough room. I connected the output of the first op amp to the negative input of the second op amp using a 1K resistor. Then I added a 100K resistor between pins 6 and 7 which sets the op amp's amplification very high. A resistor, a capacitor, and a series of diodes sets the op amp's input to around 1.6 volts which is just below the threshold needed to light the LED. And last but not least, a current limiting resistor connects our second op amp's output to our LED. Then all you have to do is connect power and your sensors. For your own safety, only use 4 AA batteries and sterilize the sensors with rubbing alcohol. Okay, I have the project put together and I'm ready to try it out. The LED is going to turn on when it thinks I'm not telling the truth. I'm going to put the finger cuffs on and I'm going to try to relax while it gets a baseline. Okay, Becky, fire away. All right, question one. Is your name Matt Richardson? Yes. Question two. Did you make this truth meter project? Yes. Question three. Do you like robots? Yes. Question four. Have you been working on your Dremel skills? Yes. <laughs>